12th of July 2023 I'm just on an errand in the car just to go and get something from a local shop my thought this evening is about religious societies and these are like modern day parables true stories real stories which teach us a lesson about what religious a religious spirit is as opposed to the Holy Spirit so take for example the religious society of the Bruderhof Bruderhof it's a German group originated in Germany Bruder meaning brother Hof meaning house as I understand it a brother's house Bruderhof um, it's been going for decades generations not sure exactly how long but it's fairly well established in Germany and it has houses communities around different parts of the world um, they are in England and there has been a documentary about them you'll find them on the internet to look at them as an example a parable of a religious society so for the Bruderhof you could liken them to the Amish you could liken them to a monastery or a convent and what we're looking at is the religious aspect of a community a society within society but it's a religious society and the very word religious means it has religious rules regulations laws precepts statutes as much as any society has in a general worldly sense religious societies have their own laws government um, some form of voting system so I've not studied the Bruderhof very closely but on paper they seem to be a good option for a Christian society within society which has separated itself from society generally but of course they are a society within the worldly society obeying all the laws of the world to be allowed to be a community within the larger community of the world now I'm stating the obvious and you know this this is common knowledge it's nothing new here but let's take that closed off religious society of the Bruderhof and let's look at, instead of the Bruderhof look at the Waco the group the family the, the so-called uh, Christian uh, religious group at Waco in the USA and again you know what happened there it ended in a disaster where the place the compound was surrounded by the FBI the FBI in the USA and uh, there was a standoff and of course this particular re religious society at Waco armed itself with guns machine guns and, and so forth and there was a armed standoff which very tragically ended in a disaster and, and the people died the majority of people died and this is this is an example of how societies religious societies they might start with good intentions but left uncorrected they become just a religious society or in the worst scenario it becomes a cult religious cult society 
and what ends up like a death cult. And again, you can remember the Jonestown massacre when the so-called Reverend Jim Jones, a so-called Pentecostal preacher, he got very religious and his so-called Pentecostal church group grew with different nations and at the beginning of it everything seemed fine it seemed like they would have said God is blessing us because the numbers are increasing the money is increasing but of course if you look at the documentary about the Jonestown massacre you can see the spirit of that gathering was uh, under the, the the man himself who was not from God not from the Holy Spirit he started his religious so-called Pentecostal church for his own motives and uh, it, it obviously went wrong in the end and there was a mass suicide and the man himself Jim Jones um, shot himself killed himself with a gun not a very Christian thing to do So, I'm just parking here, bear with me. So, we're focusing on a parable of a religious society. And various people start various churches with all good intentions and they want things to be right and it's based on Christianity. They might say it's based on Christ. They might say it's based on the Bible. They might even say it is a Holy Spirit group led by the Holy Spirit. But the very fact that they started it as an organization with its unique brand, its name, its title, um, its uh, formation, charitable status or not, its foundation, an agreed form of words between people, even using Christian language, even using scriptures, they started it. Man started it. Man wants to build something as a memorial for himself. So when he leaves this mortal coil, this earth, they can historically say he started that church. So, for instance, Joseph Smith, a man with a vision. Now, we know the vision he had from a false angel, a made-up name of an angel, Moroni. It's not a biblical name. Um, it was an angel, yes, but it was a demon. Masquerading as a good angel, giving this so-called vision a bizarre vision to him, plates and special glasses which disappeared. And one man started his religious society of the Mormons and calling it a name which is a false name for Christ. The Church of Jesus Christ and Latter-day Saints is not the real Jesus Christ absolutely not and the book of mormon is not another gospel it's just man's misled imagination fed of course by the enemy false visions false ideas even based on christianity even based on christ's teaching christ's philosophy theosophy theology it's all meaningless. At the end of the day, it's all meaningless. Because man cannot start the church. When they preached the gospel that first day of Pentecost, they went out from the upper room, 120 of them, baptized with the fire of the Holy Spirit, they went out to tell the truth in love. 1 Corinthians 13. Love is patient, kind. Speaking the truth in love, people were convicted of their sin. 
And of course, they were cut to their heart with the fact that they had murdered the Christ. So, they were cut to their heart and they repented and they were saved. 3,000 were added to the church that first day of Pentecost. And the church was born in Christ, born again. The ecclesia, the disciples in Jerusalem came into being, 120 became 3,000 households. So you can multiply that by two, three, a factor of two or three. With their children, they became households for Christ. Mini society, a mini group, but they were in and amongst society, but not of the world anymore, since they were now of Christ. So let's bring it back to the Bruderhof, a very nice group of nice Christian-minded people obeying the basic principles of Christianity, and they've got a little micro-society within the larger society of the country, whether it's Germany or England, it doesn't matter. So here they are. They are an enclosed compound, to use the Waco term, an enclosed society, not with barbed wire fences, of course. They're just a, a farm amongst all the farms of their area. They're just another house amongst all the houses of the area. But they become known to be Christian society called the Bruderhof. A bit strange name, a bit foreign name in England, of course, but of course it's German. Take the Jesus Army. The Jesus Army was an offshoot of the Baptist Church, an evangel evangelistic group, an offshoot, a wing of the Baptist Church going on the streets, and eventually they split off from the Baptist Church and they started their own church called the Jesus Army army a bit like the salvation army but they started their own independent organization and man started another church another denomination and they expanded from northampton in the uk to other places including norwich uk and they had houses with grounds and they ran it as a community house uh, everything seemed like a good thing, a bit like a kibbutz. Uh, there was a pulling together, doing things. People were expected to work, to bring money into the project. But it was run as a Christian community house along a set number of rules and regulations, including segregation, dormitories, and so forth. And it seems like a good idea. But man tries to do the best to interpret what Christianity is and to run a project, and he does his best. So a society within society, it's a bit like the, the Mormons having a whole city, a city dedicated to Mormonism if you like, they would call it a Christian city. And amongst all the decadent cities of America, the Mormons would call it a Christian city. Uh, an example of the kingdom of heaven on earth, the Mormon Christian city. But of course, we know Mormons are not Christian, not in the sense of, of mainstream, true, evangelical, Bible-believing, Holy Spirit-filled Christians. They're not. But this is the confusion that's come on the world. The whole world is confused about who Christians are, who Christians are not. And the only one who's not confused is the Holy Spirit. God is not confused. God is not the author of confusion. In fact, you could say God is the author of clarity. God is the author of sanity. God is the truth, and he speaks the truth in love. 1 Corinthians 13. This is a continuation, if you like, of that thought. Love is patient, love is kind. 
Jesus didn't say set up societies. He said preach the gospel. Preach the gospel. This is now a new day, another new day in God's economy. God is changing us from one degree of glory to another. He is changing us. He is fashioning us. He is changing us as living stones to fit together. And it's not for man to go and make an organization called the Living Stones and set it up as it, it's, it's his organization. And of course, then man becomes the cornerstone, not Jesus Christ. Man becomes the foundation, not Jesus Christ. And without the true foundation in your life as a single individual member of the body of Christ, your life is not in Christ. You don't have Christ as the foundation under your feet. You're still in the shifting sands of this world. So you must be born again. You must leave this world. You must die to self in order to live in Christ, for Christ, through Christ. The root of my faith, my life, is Jesus Christ. The root. The root of the true vine is Jesus Christ. I'm a branch. From the root comes a branch. I'm a branch, just a, a branch. I'm not an organization. I'm not a company. I don't keep accounts. I'm an individual, as we all are, the body of Christ. One head, one root. One purpose, one life, Ephesians 4. Unity in the body of Christ is all about Christ, it's all about the Holy Spirit. It's not about us, it's about God, the Holy Spirit, guiding us. One Spirit, one faith, one Lord, one baptism, one God, one Father over all, one loaf. God is one. And the body must be one. There can't be two bodies. We can't be split. There are two sides, two hands, two feet. One undivided heart. We are, in Christ, a body of people in this world, not of this world. They are in the world not of Christ. The vast majority of them, even those who go to church, even those who minister from the front of religious places, they might be the head of their community, they might be the number one in their local community, in their local church, but if they're not in Christ, if they're not born of Christ, born in Christ, then all they have is religion. God is moving us forward. This is Wednesday. We assume there's going to be a, a Sunday and next Sunday. And how will next Sunday's service be? Will it be us sitting in a circle waiting for the Holy Spirit to speak to whosoever, whatsoever? And will we be invited, as God has said in 1 Corinthians 14, will we be invited to contribute and will the Holy Spirit lead us in that meeting? Through people, yes, of course. Through a microphone, yes, if that's necessary. But read 1 Corinthians 14. Look at the service, orderly service, how things are meant to be when we fellowship with the Holy Spirit in Christ, in God's will, and with one another. So, religious societies are under a religious spirit, and that religious spirit can seem like Christ, but Christ is not a religion. The Holy Spirit is not a religion. Man has invented religion for whatever reason, to help him cope, yes, Something to do, yes, rituals, sacraments, 
things that he has made holy based on the Bible, based on Christ's teaching. But unless the Holy Spirit leads the meeting, it is just religion. I've said enough. I've said enough. This is yet another day that's moving us forward in time, awaiting the Lord's coming. And we are waiting for Christ's coming soon, and the world is not aware of that fact. As in the days of Noah, as in the days of Sodom and Gomorrah, the world carries on eating and drinking, doing what it's always done, preoccupying itself with itself, self-motivated, survival of the self, self, self-centered. But we who are now of Christ, Christ-centered, we're looking at them and they're looking at us. But mostly they ignore us and we know they're not interested. So pray for Trevor and I tomorrow, God willing, we meet and we will try to engage with people the usual way in the supermarkets, the coffee, cafes, petrol stations, places we go to, the banks. We have a, a set routine. And even with Christians, churchgoers, we want to engage with them and fellowship with the Holy Spirit. So pray for us with all the lost and found. And of course, we are looking for the lost sheep to lead them to Christ, who's our shepherd, your shepherd. God bless you, brethren of the one God, his one church throughout this world. One day of salvation at a time. We're getting closer to the coming of the Lord. One way or the other, we go to be with him or he comes to get us. We don't know when. God bless you.